regimented, or do you just love writing so much you, you can't wait to get home to your laptop? Hmm. Um, I've had to learn to, to be more regimented, to write through non-creative times, mm -hmm. because I have a tendency, um, and I, I probably do this in my day job, too, I kind of let things rock around in my head mm -hmm. um, until I'm ready to spit them out. But I found that writing fiction, I actually have to get the words on paper before I can start arranging them. It's not like I can formulate my legal arguments in my head, and then a lot of those never go on paper, so it's okay for them to reside in my head. So I've had to at least give myself some word goals for a week, mm -hmm. um, and it varies depending on what else I'm doing. But I'll at least at the beginning of a week say, this week I'm going to try and get X done. And then just however that works out, may mm -hmm. all work out in one day, may work out in several days, but that's, a, that's my level of discipline is just getting a goal for each week. Yeah, that's probably better because I try to give myself a daily goal, which means when you don't make your daily goal, you'll feel extra bad the next day. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to make up for over. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it always washes out to be the same at the end of the week, but then you've got those bad days and those the good angst. days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. The feeling like a failure because you didn't make your goal that day. But I remember somebody on somewhere told me you can't edit a blank page because exactly. I, used to, I used to be one if it wasn't going down perfect and I thought it was sucking, I would just stop. But then what are you going to do? Then you've got nothing. So Exactly. And that's been a big learning um, curve for me. But n now that I've gotten to that point, it, it makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. And I feel, I mean, even if I wrote, you know, a thousand words that aren't great, at least I feel better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can yeah. always go back and fix them, but if they're not there, like you said, you can't, can't do exactly. anything with that. Although I'm one of those that I hate just cutting things out because they suck, so I try to rework them and rework them, and it would probably be better if I just threw them out. So somebody <laughs> told me once, if you love them so much, you print them out and you hang them on the wall, but you don't need you to You know, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I've had some of those whole <laughs> chapters. <laughs> well, I'll cut it and I'll paste it and I'll put it over there and I'll be like, maybe I'll use it later. <laughs> yeah, some other story somewhere. <laughs> Speaking of writing, you have a work in progress that you're working on right now. I do. Um, it's kind of morphing. Um, I, I think I'm in the process of reworking some of it, but um, hopefully it'll be kind of the actual story will be nailed down soon. But, um, I won't, yeah, I wanted to write a book set in Santa Fe. I lived in Santa Fe for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, it's just beautiful country and different. it's a different style of life, very laid back. So I thought I might do something fun with that. Oh, well, it's called Tentatively for Now, Do Not Disturb. It's true. And you want to tell us a little bit about the story? Well, um I have a, a blurb posted on my website, but I've kind of changed some of that. But basically what I've got is a, um, a rock star who, for various reasons that are still in flux, <laughs> has decided to kind of drop out of her rock star life, like right at the pinnacle of her career. Um, and she meets another woman, um, who has no interest in a love interest, who's very, very career-oriented, who is um, in Santa Fe to convert a hotel there to a new chain. Um, and, you know, there's, there's going to be a little bit of comedy to it, a little bit of tragedy, but um, I think they'll wind up together. <laughs> that may depend on the great debate, do lesbians want happy endings in their books? That happens next week at the conference. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you they're going to wind up together, but how they get there is <laughs> is still uh, just a seed in my head right now. <laughs> oh, we have a question from the chat room. Carson, what is the one thing you hope readers get from your writing? <sighs> Well, this is going to sound really corny, but I hope that um, that everyone gets that true love transcends. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I write romance because I believe in it, um, and if I didn't, uh, I just I couldn't be authentic. Um, but I I really hope that 
people realize it transcends everything. Um, different kinds of people, straight, lesbian, black, white, um, that's the one thing we can all get out of life that's really special. Oh, that's a very nice message. And I think you're totally right. Oh, and sure. I've seen that with all, with all the male male books that are out there. They, I think those authors just want people to realize that falling in love is falling in love. It doesn't matter who you are or who you're Absolutely. falling in love with. Absolutely. Wow. Now, do you, I know you've got the big conference coming up this weekend. Um, do you have anything else scheduled? Do you do book signings in the local area? I have. Um, I was actually in Austin in January with a contingent of Texas lesbian authors. There were about eight of us from various publishing houses. Um, I, I I would love to make it to Saints and Sinners in New Orleans, which is another conference. I'm kind of waiting on a to see if I have a trial date scheduled then. Mm. <laughs> that tends to interfere with my life sometimes. I guess you can't <laughs> tell them. Sorry, Judge. I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. Saints and Sinners. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did, um, when I was scheduled to be in Provincetown last October, it um, was a fairly f flexible trial date. I knew well enough in advance. I, I told the judge that I had a conference out of town, and I had to reset that date. Um, and I was just lucky enough to get to do so. But I will be doing um, several events um, here in Dallas and in Austin in August when the new book comes out. Um, I'm going to try also and attend the Golden Crown Literary Society, which is the lesbian fiction um, conference. It will be in Orlando at the latter part of July. Oh, I will be in Orlando the end of April for the Romantic Times Book Lovers Conference. Love Orlando. I'm a child at heart. So yeah, I could, the hotel I could spend weeks at all the parts. Although I'm, I'm happier to be in Orlando in April after coming out of this New York snow than you're going to be to be there in, in August in or July. July. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, hopefully your your rates will be a little cheaper for your hotel than mine. Yeah, are. <laughs> that would be the benefit. <laughs> well, let me give everyone your website so they can go and look you up and they can Perfect. read the blurbs and the excerpts that are there. Um, it's CarsonTate.com. That's spelled C-A-R-S-E-N-T-A-I-T-E.com. And you also have a MySpace. That's MySpace.com slash CarsonTate. That's true. Well, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Anything, any parting words you want to leave us with? Um, keep reading, and we'll keep writing. And there you go, because we are nothing without the readers. That's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely correct. Thanks for everybody who turned in, and thanks for this opportunity. It was great to talk to you. Well, thank you for coming, and I wish you luck in your conference. Thank you very much. You could probably come home with lots of stories for the next book. Yeah, and the fan, <laughs> <can>, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, too. <laughs> well, they're saying thank you very much in the chat room. They enjoyed you. <laughs> great. Thank you.